Hi guys, it's Crystal from Dreamline Design Patterns and today we're going to talk about keyboard shortcuts. I wasn't sure what to do for the next video because there are quite a few things to cover, but I use keyboard shortcuts so often, as you've seen in the other videos already, that I wanted you guys to know what they are and how they work and what they do. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And this list you see over here will be in the description box below where you can download it, print it out, keep it with you until you learn them. You don't have to use any keyboard shortcuts. These are just the ones I find most useful. And the reason they are useful is for productivity. They, um, they don't take as much time as clicking everything and finding everything. It's just easy to click a couple of keys on the keyboard and have it do what you want it to do. So, like I said, you don't have to use shortcuts, but I do recommend it for increased productivity. So, we are going to go ahead and jump into this. Um, v is the selection tool. And I'll not be going in order. These are in like an alphabetical order. I'll be going in the order that um, is simplest and easiest to follow. Now I have tried to make this video a couple of times, so I'm going to go ahead and fix something real quick. Um, I went ahead and put a piece of my finesse pattern. This is how I start the making of that pattern. And I went ahead and put it over here because I felt that that would be the easiest way to show you is to show you how these things apply in making cloth pad patterns. Um, there will be a few things in here I don't discuss while I'm working because um, they're just part of the process. But um, V is the selection tool. What that does is it's basically what it says. It selects an object. It allows you to move it around. Um, right click and do different actions. It also allows you to use this toolbar up here to make adjustments, um, things like that. It's pretty straightforward. Now we're going to talk about the hand tool. Pushing H will give you the hand tool, which you can pan around the entire area. Um, this is helpful when you are zoomed way in, which we'll talk about in a second. And let's say you're zoomed way in to see this intersection here. Um, you can use this to pan around. You can use it all over the place um, because you can also work in this gray area. So it's just a fast way to get around the area. Um, which brings me to my next point. Let's say you are in here. You're doing intricate work, but you want to see how it looks as a whole. You want to see the entire artboard. Um, or let's say you got way over here and you're not sure where you're at and you just want to get back to the, um, the artboard. You click Control-0. That will bring back your artboard, the active artboard, centered. And that way you can see everything that you've been working on. The next thing that we are going to talk about is the zoom in and zoom out. You can zoom in by pressing Control plus and just keep pressing that until you get as far in as you would like and Control minus zooms you out. So that is much easier than zooming in and out. It just is. So I do recommend that you guys learn those. Okay, so let's talk about undo. Let's say you made a shape and you don't like it or you made a mistake somewhere and you want to undo it, you click Control Z. Control Z will be your very best friend, especially when you first start out and you're learning things and make mistakes, learn from it. Undo will be your best friend and that is Control Z. Okay, the next thing that we are going to talk about is Let's see, which one do I want to do next? The direct selection tool, which is A. You can find that right here. And what it does is it allows you to select anchor points or pathways individually and adjust them individually. So if I want to adjust this anchor point, let's say I have a line here and I'm doing my shape for the sake of it. We'll just say that this is part of my shape and I want to connect them. I can click that anchor point and I can drag it to this anchor point. This is a really awesome tool. I love this tool. It allows you to do so much. Um, 
if you messed up and you didn't get things right where you wanted them, it's a great way to make minor adjustments without having to undo things. It's just a really good tool to use. It also allows you, let's say I selected this path and I wanted to move this path. I can move it anywhere I want. Um, so it's not just anchor points, it will allow you to move pathways too. And while we're talking about pathways and anchors, anchors are at the end points of a path, which is any line. Any line that you see is a pathway. The lines on the outside of a shape is a pathway. Any line is a pathway. An anchor point will be found at the end of a pathway or at an intersection or sometimes along a pathway. They are like intersection points. They mark the start and the end of a pathway. That's what anchor points and pathways are. So if you hear me talking about them, that is why. So we've pretty much discussed what the direct selection tool does. So now we're going to talk about the scissors tool, which you can get by pressing C or going right here on your toolbar over here. This is a very, it's a tool that I use a lot. It's the best tool that I found. I like it better than Path Eraser. It's just great. Let's say that um, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and, and just do this really quick um, so I can show you how it applies. Now, let's say that I decided these wings are just too, they're, they're too short. They need to be longer. Um, but I don't want to redo all of this. Well, what can I do? You hit C or go to the scissors tool and you can cut at an anchor point or a pathway. I generally cut anchor points though. So we're going to cut this one and we're going to cut this one. It's clean. It's even. It's great. So I've decided that I don't think these are enough. So I click this one and I want to click this one by holding shift and it selects them both. That is another shortcut. So let's say I want these a little bit wider because they're not like, let's say your wings just were not wide enough. They didn't meet in the middle, which happens. I'm going to click alt so that I'm adjusting both sides and I'm going to drag from the middle here. Okay, now this is where your direct selection tool comes in. So you've cut it with your scissors. Now you're going to go A and use your direct selection tool. We're going to select this anchor and we're just going to drag it to this one. We're going to select this anchor and just drag it to this one. This is a way for you to adjust sections. You don't want to lose your entire work, so you use the scissors to cut off the portion that you need to fix, and then you can join them back. That is why scissors is a great tool to use. So I'm going to undo all of that. And now we're going to talk about copying and pasting. Another great tool. Um, Control C copies it. Control V pastes it but you never know where it's going to paste it so I don't generally use that method I use control F which means paste in front that means the one I just copied and pasted is directly on top of the original if I move it you see it was directly on top so that is how I copy and paste things because when you're making patterns a lot of times you want you, you want it to be accurate you want it to be exactly the way that you want so that is how I paste things now we are going to show you how some of these things apply to each other I'm gonna kinda show you some of my process I'm gonna select this with the selection tool I'm gonna hit C and cut now I have this piece. I'm going to control C, control F to paste in. Well, apparently it only had one part of it selected. 
Okay, control C to copy, control F to paste. And I'm going to, again, I'm going to hit shift. I'm going to click, hit shift to keep it directly in line with the original. And I am going to let go. You see how this works? Now we're going to do, we're going to practice some more with the copying and pasting in front. I'm going to control C to copy, control F to paste in front. I'm going to reflect that. And this is how it applies to cloth pads. Now you have an entire shape and all you started with was like a quarter of a shape. I hope this isn't too hard to follow. Um, I know it's a lot to take in, um, but I wanted to show you how these things functioned in the process. So we've talked about the direct selection tool, the scissors tool, selection tool, hand tool, centering the artboard, copy, paste, paste in front, control R we've talked about before. That brings up your ruler. Okay, That's usually what I do when I'm setting up a, um, a document. Hold on, Booger. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, so now we're, we've talked about zoom in, zoom out. Control Z for undo. Shift. Not only does shift keep things directly in line, either top to bottom, side to side, or 45 degrees. Okay. But shift also works when you're scaling. So if you want to scale, you can scale proportionately with the shift key. Um, and that's not generally the one that I use because I like using shift alt, which is our next uh, shortcut. It allows you to make it bigger all around, like from the middle. Um, it shows up better if I get like a square or something you're moving out in all directions proportionately at one time. I just personally like that better. Um, I find myself using it more often than just the shift. Um, so that was shift alt. We've talked about holding shift. Now let's talk about holding alt. Let's say I want a copy of this. A direct copy and I don't want to copy and paste and blah 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 all of that stuff I just want a duplicate of it I can hold alt and I have a direct duplicate okay you can do that as many times as you want to all day every day um, and you can as it says here you can combine these to do more for example holding sh alt and shift at the same time will duplicate an item while keeping it in line with the original item we talked about how if I hit shift while I was dragging it would keep it in line we talked about how if I hit alt it will duplicate it but if you want to duplicate it and keep it in line you're going to um, alt click and hold shift while you drag that will keep it directly in line make sure that you keep holding shift if you're trying to keep something in line keep holding shift until after you let go of the mouse button um, if you are holding shift to keep it straight and then you let go of shift it's going to go wherever so you don't let go of shift until you have um, unclicked your mouse so um, I know we covered a lot in this um, video. I hope that it was not confusing. I felt the best way to show you guys was to just show you in practice here with an actual piece of a pattern. Um, feel free to rewatch it, ask any questions that you may have. Um, and uh, the next video that we do will be the essential tools of pattern making. And that may be split up into two to three videos because there's quite a lot to cover and I want to keep the videos relatively short. But that will be the next thing that we cover now that we know the shortcuts. Um, 
I hope you guys enjoy the video and I will talk to you guys later. If you like the video, like and subscribe for more videos on cloth pad pattern making. Bye guys!